How's it going everyone? Blue Knight here and welcome back to yet another Crash Bandicoot video. Although this time I'm going to be taking a deep dive into the franchise's primary villain, as well as my favorite villain in the series, Dr. Neo Cortex. Neo Cortex made his grand debut way back in 1996 with the very first Crash Bandicoot game called, well, Crash Bandicoot therefore establishing him as the franchise's main villain, with him appearing in pretty much every single piece of Crash Bandicoot media aside from Skylanders Academy, so he could sort of be considered the Dr. Eggman of Crash's universe. Dr. Cortex's concept was obviously inspired by other villainous mad scientists, I like to imagine him being a, like a cross between Sonic's Dr. Eggman and Ratchet and Clank's Dr. Nefarious in terms of personality and goals, with similar traits like being utterly psychotic, being short-tempered, <coughs> reckless, having a grudge against other mad scientists, criticizing his plans, in which he tries to prove them wrong, which do actually work until Crash comes along. He's also very stubborn and fails to plan ahead or even learn from his past mistakes, which is something that we learn at the start of Crash 1, when he refuses to listen to his henchman at the time, Dr. Nitrous Brio. But Dr. Cortex, we haven't determined the cause of past failures! <laughs> Moron! Making Cortex similar to, again, Sonic's Dr. Eggman, who until Sonic Forces, never learned from past failures, then goes back to not planning ahead in the comics. Cortex also resorts to deceiving others to get what he wants done, like Crash for instance. Okay, Crash is already pretty dumb to begin with, so I can see how he succeeded there. While Cortex doesn't appear to really like or care for anyone outside of himself and Nina Cortex, My daughter, uh, niece! Don't worry, I'll come back to this. He does seem to put up with Dingo Dial, Tiny, Engine, and to an extent, Nitrous Brio, despite their past failures. Cortex is normally behind the events of almost every single game in the franchise. There are entries like Crash Free Warped, Wrath of Cortex, or Titans, where he'll wind up serving under another character, more specifically, Uka Uka, and the primary reason for that is that Cortex actually fears Uka Uka, who doesn't take too well whenever Cortex continues to fail time after time again. Oh, and Cortex also worked with Ripto at one point and accidentally transformed into Mega Mix in the handheld games. What have I done? With his concept and appearance history out of the way, let's move on to his backstory that's been established within the main series as well as other development sources like development guidebooks and stuff like that. I'm not counting the handheld games, the spin-off games, or even Titans and Mutants due to canonical purposes and differences. Then again, thanks to Twin Sanity, that basically makes the entire franchise canon, but for the sake of simplicity, we'll just stick to the core entries of the franchise. So according to the Crash Bandicoot production book, way before the first Crash Bandicoot game, Cortex was the youngest son born into a family of unsuccessful traveling circus clowns, which I do feel that the sad clown skin in Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled could be a reference to that fact. At the age of two, his family was threatened with expulsion from Smile and Jimmy's Travel and Sideshow if they failed to put a new spin on their act, dragging Cortex from their home wagon and stripping him of Newton's Principa Mathematica. The Cortex family made their first successful attempt at humor, the sight of a two-year-old white-faced red-nosed prematurely balding bundle of misery asking for his physics back in a dreary monotone sent Jimmy into convulsive fits of laughter. He renewed the Cortexes and made Neo the star of the show. The act was soon modified and a year later it included not only physical abuse by the other clowns, but also cabbage catching and possibly the most punishing the stage name Little Idjit. To this day, sight, sound, or mention of clowns whatsoever propels Cortex into a furious rage. Go away, you filthy clown! No, no. He's a mime. Mime clown? Close enough! With their painted faces and tattoos and stupid little honker things that... 
I mean, I kind of feel bad for Cortex having to go through all that. I'm sure it wasn't easy, especially when the other clowns basically put a lowercase n on his head via a permanent marker, speaking of the original trilogy anyways, because later games like Twin Sanity, which is technically the fifth main series Crash Bandicoot game, it looks to be metallic, not marker. It's apparent that this is what they decided to keep for the Insane Trilogy and Nitro Fueled, that is, if we're looking at sort of a timeline reset here. As for going from a lowercase to an uppercase N, depending on his age, I never did quite understand that, even compared to Nina, who always had a lowercase N. I don't know, I always found that a little odd. Oh, and Madam Amberly has a capital A for some reason. Anyways, Cortex's abuse stopped around the age of 5, after a freak fireworks explosion wiped out his entire family in the main tent a puzzling occurrence since no fireworks were ever used in any act whatsoever due to Corporal Jimmy's post-war nightmares. Leaving Cortex to fend for himself, free from the circus, he then enrolled into Madame Amberley's Academy of Evil at age 6. I know the book doesn't mention the Academy of Evil, but since Twin Sanity came along, we'll go with that. Where Cortex met his lifelong associates Nitrous Brio and Injun, but even there, Cortex could not escape any sort of teasing or bullying, as he excelled academically while floundering socially. Time after time, other kids would brutally beat him after school as payback for breaking the curve. His infancy, bookish ways, arrogant attitude, and swollen cranium made him the whipping boy of every high school bully and not a few of his teachers, likely implying Madame Amberley. So he and Brio, who was similarly an outcast and the only friend to Cortex. Again, Cortex really had a rough childhood. Things start to get a bit more interesting as in Twin Sanity. This was when Cortex made the first prototype of the Evolvo Ray that would later create Crash when still not quite perfected and accidentally sending his two pet parrots, Victor and Mortz, to the 10th Dimension who later return for revenge in Crash Twin Sanity. How tiresome. Oh, you wanna play mind games? Okay, tough guy. <laughs> the two continue to endure through school until another freak explosion blown the building, most of the surrounding town, and the local countryside by a sudden malfunction in the school physics department's test nuclear plant. Amazingly enough, Cortex and Brio were just outside for radius of destruction, studying mineral formations two miles deep in a plutonium mine and were miraculously spared. Thus began the search for a place to call home, but everywhere from the Himalayas to the Congo, from the Arctic Plains to the deserts of the Middle East, Cortex and Brio found themselves ridiculed and ostracized. Remarkably, whenever they left a locale, a mysterious series of violent explosions and catastrophes followed, Shortly after the pair's quick exodus out of Chernobyl, Russia, these coincidences gained attention from various international law organizations, and Cortex and Brio were soon on the international most wanted list. Hard to catch, but easy to follow, the two saw a place where they could hide away from people. Eventually, they took advantage of a shady land offer ad in a free line classified in the Australian tabloid Dirt Down Under and found themselves owners of what anyone civilized would consider the farthest place from humanity. Perfect. Huddled on their new island under an odd stone pillar of unknown origin, Cortex vowed to get even with mankind once and for all. It wasn't until five years later that he began to see his plans realized. Soon afterward, Cortex realized that his puny body couldn't crush a fly, so he figured that the only way to take over the world was to create an army of mutated animals called the Cortex Commandos. To achieve this goal, Brio came up with the ideas that Cortex would later take credit for, for both the Evolvo Ray and the Cortex Vortex, a device that was made to have their mutations do their every will. Unfortunately, that did not work for Crash, who was intended to be the Cortex Commando's general. This bandicoot will be my general, and he will lead my Cortex Commandos to world domination! Before going any further, I should mention that according to the Crash Bandicoot files, 
which was before the Crash Bandicoot production book, that sometime before Crash 1, Cortex put these bolts into Nitrous Brio's head to inflict pain on him, assumingly whenever he fails. But if you're wanting to know more about Brio, then I recommend checking out VTNVV's video on the subject in the description below. Things from this point now get a little bit more streamlined, because we've reached the point where the games actually start. Crash defeats Cortex, rescues Tana, Cortex discovers power crystals that can be used to power his space station, which is basically a giant version of the Cortex Vortex. He tricks Crash into gathering the crystals for him until Coco blows the whole thing. Quick and very simple boss battle then happens, Cortex is defeated again, Brio destroys the Cortex Vortex, yeah they became enemies after Crash 1. It crashes to Earth, freeing Uka Uka, who's very angry towards Cortex's failures to retrieve the crystals and gems, who work together with Entropy to basically control time. The three are then defeated and sent back to an unknown time period. Wrath of Cortex comes around as if warp never happened. Cortex created Crunch. Crunch's mind control is broken by Crash, while Cortex and Uka Uka are stuck on an iceberg for three years. Three years I spent alone in the frozen Antarctic wastes, and I missed you. Crash and Cortex are then forced to work together to defeat the evil twins, anger some local bees, ah! travel to the 10th dimension where an evil version of Crash takes Nina Cortex. My daughter, uh, niece! Yeah, it's time to finally address this. We learned before that Cortex was the only surviving member of his family during the circus incident. Unless there was another surviving member, then Nina could not be his niece. As this could have been simply because Crash came up behind Cortex and Cortex caught himself and switched the wording around. My daughter, uh, niece! Suggesting that at some point before Crash 1, Cortex was in a relationship, but then why would he say that she's his niece then? Maybe this was something to do with him not resting until he conquered the world, and he wanted to put that part of his past behind him. Or it could just be a joke towards the idea that the developers had during development, like many other ideas, they were mentioned as kind of fourth wall breaks. Wrath of Cortex didn't do as well as we'd hoped, and... <laughs> Fish? I don't know, what do you guys think? Speaking of Nina, she was very kind-hearted and loved furry animals. Cortex saw this as potentially bad and replaced her hands with bionic steel hands. What are there, little lady? so that she'd be unable to get close to any animals whatsoever without basically crushing the life out of them. Jeez, Cortex, as if the bolts in Nitrous Brio's head wasn't enough, that's just dark, even for the Crash series. He then sent her to his old school, Madame Amberley's Academy of Evil, so she'll become as evil as he is. This is where Cortex finds her in twin sanity, but to get out of there, Cortex has to get past his former teacher, Madam Amberley. So, Crybaby Cortex is all grown up. I see you found employment as a barber. I'm an evil scientist. The trio defeats the evil twins. Cortex winds up inside of Crash's brain. And that's basically it when it comes to the lore and backstory for Cortex in the main Crash Bandicoot series. Well, the original canon and the insane trilogy, so to speak. Reason I didn't talk about Cortex in Titans, Mutant, Crash Tag Team Racing, or the other spin-off and Skylanders media is because things were very different from one another, which became kind of contradictory. Like characters not behaving like themselves in Crash Tag Team Racing, design changes in Titans and Mutants, Nina all of a sudden being able to speak after remaining mute into insanity, although it was intended for her to speak in the game, but that was cut due to time restraints, which I'm assuming is the direction that they want to keep for Nina Cortex as of Crash Nitro Fueled, suggesting that the previous two remakes are sort of considered a timeline reset, basically retconning Wrath of Cortex, Twin Sanity, and all the others that came after the original trilogy, while starting over from scratch with these already introduced characters. 
For those aforementioned reasons, I kinda consider most of the Crash series outside of the core games as like these infinite dimensions that were mentioned in Crash Twin Sanity, yet still remaining canon all the same. Having a Hero's Tale Spyro appear in the 10th dimension, alongside Evil Crash and the cut Evil Coco, with the latter making it into Nitro Fueled as well, albeit as a skin for Coco. These are just examples of the universe that Twin Sanity has built upon. In short, Cortex is a fantastic villain in the Crash Bandicoot franchise, oftentimes considered a fan favorite by many. Part of the reason for this, I believe, is because of Crash Twin Sanity, as in that game, Cortex is literally being thrown into one bad yet hilarious situation after another. I'm stuck! The greatest evil scientist in the world! Stuck in a pipe. How could things get any worse? It's a real shining spot for the character in not just this game, but the franchise as a whole. I mean, even Cortex in later games like Titans couldn't even compare with how good Cortex was written in Twin Sanity. I'm an evil scientist, what do you expect? This isn't a game. True. Now, playtime is over! It's really well done, and the primary reason why I like Cortex as much as I do today is because of Twin Sanity. Hopefully, moving forward with the next Crash Bandicoot game in the series, presumably being Crash 4 coming later this year, I really hope that Cortex's portrayal in Twin Sanity remains intact for his character in the franchise moving forward. Anyways guys, this is going to be the end of this Dr. Cortex discussion video. If I left anything out, which I'm sure I did somewhere, be sure to let me know in the comment section below, and also be sure to stay tuned to the channel for even more Crash Bandicoot content coming your way. Once again, thank you all so much for watching and supporting the channel. I've been Blue Knight, and I'll see you guys back here next time. Goodbye! What?